Here we're going to be looking at a current liability, which is a short-term liability here, and we're going to be looking at notes payable. Now, notes payable either can be interest-bearing or they can be zero interest-bearing notes payable here. Notes payable are written promises to pay a certain sum of money on a specified day, and it can be issued here for purchases or financing or other transactions. They're often referred to as trade notes payable. So let's look at our example here, and we're going to start with this interest-bearing notes payable here. So we're going to have Bank B is going to lend $100,000 here on March 1st or 3120X1 here to Corporation A. And on this notes payable there's going to be a 6% stated rate of interest and that's a yearly rate of interest and it's going to be for four months this notes payable here. Okay, so let's look at uh, our journal entries here and let's look at how we'd record this here on March 1st when this notes payable here is issued. We would debit or increase our cash by $100,000 because that's what Corporation A is receiving here from Bank B. And then they would be recording this notes payable here as a current liability here again on the balance sheet here and credit that for $100,000 here. Now that it would be the face value here and there's going to be a stated rate of interest here on this notes payable here of 6% per year here and, and that's stated right on that notes payable. Now what we have to look at is uh, for the next month, uh, end of each of the next months here, March through June here, we're going to have to record an interest payable here on this note because there's a stated rate of interest of 6% per year here. So what we would do for each of those months, we take the $100,000 amount here on the face value of that note times that 6% stated rate of interest and then one twelfth of that. That's the amount we'd recognize our each year, uh, each month here at $500. So for each of those months here, the end of each of the months here, March through June, we would credit our interest payable here, which is a current liability again here on our balance sheet for $500 for each of those months here. And then on our income statement, recognize it here as interest expense on this notes payable. Debit that here for $500 each month. Now just remember with interest bearing note, you have that stated rate of interest here in the note. In this case it was 6%. Okay, so we've taken care of our interest payable here. Now they actually hadn't paid out any cash, we just recognized that as an interest expense here because it had that stated rate of interest here in our note. Now let's look at when this note matures here and it would be um, July 1st here, or the four months later here, and we would be paying or Corp A here would be paying the face value of the note plus the interest accrued on this note here. So what we would do as our entries here would be uh, let's just say here uh, on our cash account on our balance sheet we'd be reducing our cash account here by the hundred thousand dollars here uh, for the notes payable itself the face amount plus we'd also be recognizing the interest cost on this note and that was two thousand dollars here or for five hundred dollars per month times four months gives us two thousand dollars so we would have credited our cash here for a total amount of a hundred thousand dollars here for the face value of the note and on our notes payable we'd be closing that out here we would be debiting our notes payable for a hundred thousand dollars and then we also had this two thousand dollars in cash here we would credit credit or reduce our cash for $2,000 because we have to pay the interest that's payable on a note. So we, on our interest payable here, again our current liability on our balance sheet, we would debit that here for $2,000. So we've taken care of our entries here now. We recognized our interest expense here and also our face value that we have to pay back to the bank here. Corp A had to pay back to the bank. 100000 face value, $2,000 worth of interest. Okay, now let's go over here and look at the zero interest bearing note here. And for example here, again the same example here, Bank B lends $100,000 here on March 1st here to Corporation A, again for this four month notes payable here. But there isn't any stated rate of interest here when you talk about a zero interest bearing note. All it would have is $102,000, that's the face value at maturity here of this notes payable. So let's go look at how we'd record that here. Now this is the difference here for the notes payable on the balance sheet again a current liability we would credit that here for $102,000. That would be the face value uh, the, uh, it, with no stated rate of interest here on this note but it's there's an implied interest is included on this note with this $102,000 amount. So the cash they would have received here we would have debit our cash account only for $100,000 
even though we recorded $102,000 here in our notes payable. But what we do is we set up this discount on notes payable, which is a contra liability account to our notes payable. It reduces our notes payable. So what we would do here, we would debit our discount on notes payable here for $2,000. Again, a contra account, it equals the cost of the borrowing. So this represents our cost of the borrowing here. Uh, recorded a notes payable here at $102,000, but we set up our discount, our contra account here for $2,000 here. So it balances, uh, and the $2,000 represents the interest cost. It balances with the cash we received here, debit amount of $100,000. Okay, so what we would do here for each, at the end of each of the next month here, March through June, uh, we have to come up with the, we're just saying the implied interest rate. We have to recognize the interest expense here. And again, I'm just, in this case, it's not a stated rate of interest, but it's implied interest rate here. Let's just say it's 6% times again, $100,000, uh, one twelfth or one twelfth of the year or five hundred dollars per month. So our discount on notes payable, we had a debit here for two thousand dollars, but we would reduce it or credit it out here at end of the each of the next month. Um, at the end of the, each of the next months here for five hundred dollars, uh, five hundred dollars per month here. So at the end of the period, we've used up all our discount here on notes payable. So it would be a zero balance here at the end of June, the thirty-first of June. And then again, for the discount on notes payable, we recognize an interest expense here on a notes payable on our income statement here uh, by that amount here for each of the end of each of the next uh, the end of each of those four months here. So we've got this interest expense on our income statement and remember the discount on notes payable was a contra account here to our notes payable here. And then at the end of uh, in July 1st here when this note becomes mature here at maturity here on 7-1 here July 1st you'd pay the face value which includes the interest expense here. So we would uh, take our notes payable off the book here. We debit that for $102,000 here on our balance sheet as our current liability and then we'd uh, reduce our cash for that $102,000 amount here on our balance sheet. Okay, so let's just uh, sum it up here. Now with this zero interest bearing note, it does not explicitly, explicitly state an interest rate on the face of the note here. The interest is still charged here at maturity the borrow must pay back in an amount greater than the cash received and issuance at issuance here. You receive cash at the present value of the note which equals the face value of the note at maturity minus interest or the discount that's charged here by the lender. So then just to review it here, this discount on notes payable which is a contra account to our notes payable here on our balance sheet, just remember that equals the cost of borrowing here and you have to charge it off accrue it each month here as an interest expense here on our income statement. So what we've done here with this again a zero interest bearing notes payable here, uh, no, no implied interest rate on the note itself or there's no stated rate of interest on a note, it's implied here. So the interest is included in the notes payable here. In this case it was $102,000 or we had $2,000 worth of interest on this note here. And then at the end of the period, the only, when you, at maturity, all you do is you reduce your cash by the face value of your notes payable and then you take your notes payable off the, uh, take it off, uh, reduce, uh, remove it here off the books as a current liability. While our interest expense here was being uh, calculated here in our discount to notes payable, which is a contra liability to our notes payable. So that takes care of our uh, difference here between an interest bearing versus a zero interest bearing notes payable.